Today on Discover Wisconsin, we're hitting the slopes for some snow action and the water for some quiet recreation. Uh, it's the, the portage has been significant since the, the ice age, so there's like a 10,000 year history here. We're diving into the past and getting a taste Boxes, that's so good. of the present, where the north begins, Portage. Hello and welcome to Discover Wisconsin. Today we're exploring a city whose history is as deep as the two rivers who helped name it, Portage. About 30 minutes from Madison and an hour from Stevens Point, the Fox and Wisconsin rivers surround what is now known as the city of Portage. Portage is named because of the piece of property, the land between the Fox and Wisconsin rivers. It's the piece of land that you would actually portage your canoe or kayak as you're walking um, from one piece of the Fox River to the Wisconsin River. At their closest points, the rivers were separated by less than two miles. In 1876, the rivers were actually connected to further the shipping industry. The man-made Portage Canal was used until 1951, and now visitors can kayak, hike, or bike along the canal and learn more about its history. I headed out on the Fox River to explore the history of Portage. Marquette and Joliet came through this area in 1673, so they, we feel that that's the first Europeans that, that came to this area. Although it had been populated and the portage had been used by um, native people for thousands of years. And today, how are the rivers in Portage utilized? There's a lot of recreational opportunities here. Uh, the Fox River is uh, fairly slow moving, so it's, it's a nice, easy, paddling, recreation, canoes, kayaks. The Wisconsin River, on the other hand, is a little bit wider with a lot of sandbars, so it's really a great place for getting out on the water in a quiet sort of a way. Peaceful recreation can also be found alongside both rivers on the Ice Age Trail. This 12-mile segment has 21 hand-built bridges and crosses through woodlands, wetlands, and prairies. The trailhead is located at the historic Indian Agency House, an 1832 interpretive site set on over 220 acres of land. Portage is why the Indian agent was here. Um, people were flocking here to, to trade because there's this huge um, transportation mecca. The house, which still stands in its original location, is one of the oldest houses in Wisconsin. It was home to John and Juliet Kinsey, while John served as an Indian agent for the Ho-Chunk Nation in the 1830s. Portage really is full of history. Um, being that we're the third oldest settlement, you can find anything about history here. In fact, you can find seven different historical sites right in Portage, including the American Legion State Headquarters, the Women's Civic League, the Portage World War II History Museum, the Portage Center for the Arts, and the Fort Winnebago Surgeon's Quarters, which is one of the oldest log houses in Wisconsin still standing on its original foundation. It was used to house soldiers when the fort was being built. Afterwards, several different fort surgeons and their families called it home. I think it's a real experience uh, to visually experience uh, what happened in 1828 to 1845 when the fort was open. During my personal tour of the historic museum at the Portage, I learned that the museum is actually the former home of author Zona Gale. The study in which Zona wrote many of her lasting works is preserved here. She has a little ingle nook where she could sit with a little bench with a stained glass window and look out at her rose garden. And right here there's a staircase that leads to the master bedroom. And actually in the wall here there's a, a hidden bathroom behind the paneling that you cannot even see. Want to see more of my behind the scenes tour? Just head to discoverwisconsin.com and choose Portage as your destination.
Stay with us. Tiny Tim has earrings, I see. Oh, yes. Ah. I'm prepping for my big stage debut next. <laughs> We're back discovering more ways to explore Portage. The Portage Canal played such a big role in the city's history that an event was started to celebrate it. Canal Days has been going on in Portage over 20 years, and it's really a celebration of the canal and, and of the history that's here in Portage. It happens within our downtown area right next to the canal. There's lots of music that goes on. There's, of course, lots of great food that you can try. And then you also get a chance to learn about the history. You get a chance to see reenactments that happen at our Indian Agency House and Surgeon's Quarters. Canal Day's encampment experience takes you back to what life was like back in the 1800s. You wanna come see? You can come and look in here. And the activities don't end there. Families can also head to the Divine Savior Healthcare Campus for some kite flying fun. Look how high we are. I know, look at that. That's awesome. We wanted to make sure that we were providing something else for families to do this weekend. We also put it in conjunction with the Divine Savior Run Walk that we have every year. Um, we thought it would be a little extra added excitement to what already is going on here for Canal Days. Portage really knows how to paint the sky from colorful kites to fireworks. Concert in the Park is our summer celebration over Independence Day where we have the Wisconsin Chamber Orchestra perform. And we have a hometown parade that happens in our residential area. We even caught a fifth quarter performance from the UW Marching Band. And Miss America singing the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light. Another crowned ambassador showed us around the Columbia County Fair in Portage, which has been held here for over 160 years. I personally would come to watch and see the animals and come on the rides. My favorite ride is the zipper and also the food. The 4-H Eat Stand has the best chocolate malts. I think I love them. There's always plenty of food at the fair to eat, that's for sure. We've got uh, over 60 vendors. We've got the uh, animal exhibits. We've got commercial exhibits, the FFA kids, the 4-H kids. We've got the grandstand events every night, the carnival. So there's a lot to do and see here. More entertainment graces the stage year round at the Portage Center for the Arts. We're sitting here in the Drake Gallery, and we have exhibits in here from September through May. And we have a six concert performing arts series. Uh, as you know, we have a 270 seat theater. And then we do rent it out to um, groups, for instance, the Portage Area Community Theater that it has the uh, play going on right now. We visited on dress rehearsal day, and look who got to fill in for the star of the show. And you're going to walk me through this, right? Because you are the real Tiny Tim. Yes, I am. All right, so how do you think I'm going to do? I think you're going to do great. Such confidence. I got dressed and headed into makeup, then made my way to the stage. Carmen walked me through my part. All right, this is, we're going to have like a signal, like they have signals in baseball yeah. where you're going, to, you're going to like point to me or you're going to like rub your belly or pull on your ear or okay. something when I need to speak, okay? Yep. All right, okay. you got to help me out. Before my big debut, I talked with the director, Diane Weiss, about this beautiful space. This is a perfect area, a perfect stage. The, it's a thrust stage, so it comes out into the audience. So it's easy to bring the audience into the scene and the action that's going on on stage. The rehearsal started, and the kids were doing such a great job, it made me more nervous for my line. Then, before I knew it, the time had come. God bless us, everyone, and Merry Christmas. Yes, Merry Christmas. To see what's happening at the Portage Center for the Arts right now, go to discoverwisconsin.com and choose Portage as your destination. <laughs> I hope you have your walking shoes on. And what we're looking at, the picture, number eight picture, is what the brewery looked like. We're making our way around historic downtown Portage next. Welcome back to Discover Wisconsin and where the North begins, Portage. Rooted deep in the past, 
Downtown Portage showcases its interesting history and architecture. Their free downtown walking tour leads visitors on a journey back to its beginnings. People in the 19th century would not go to Madison like we go to Madison, come back in a morning because it's horse and buggy, it was a day trip, and so it was all here. In the late 1840s, downtown Portage began its run as a bustling retail center that served a large region across north central Wisconsin. In those days, there's no electricity, so you have to have great big windows. And so that's why all the 19th century buildings had great big windows because we wanted the natural light back as far into the building as we could. Why do you enjoy doing this so much? Well, I enjoy giving tours because um, I was a history major and I never taught history in my long teaching career. And so now that I'm retired, I get to teach history. And of course, I enjoy making things fit together and that's what history does. I found a refreshing piece of history at Will's Drug, a good old fashioned soda fountain. Mm. Of course, you can still find a wide variety of restaurants and retail shopping downtown. Downtown Portage has over 180 businesses that you can find within our downtown. If you're looking for that special gift for someone, or maybe it's something for yourself, you'll be able to find it within our downtown. And don't forget about the farmer's market. Every Thursday afternoon, May through October, featuring delicious homemade treats. Well, I'll take a cherry pine. All righty. And a couple of peach dumplings. As well as fresh produce and locally grown food. You never know what handmade products and fresh food you'll find from week to week at the market. And if you're looking to sample a little more of what downtown has to offer, head to the Taste of Portage event. It is a beautiful day out and I cannot wait to taste a little bit of Portage. And my nose is leading me this direction. What do we hey have guys, here? We got brisket today. Oh, I had love brisket? brisket. Let's try it. You're going to try a little of this. Oh my gosh, is that so, so good? You can find different food choices from lots of our different local restaurants and local nonprofit groups. And then we have arts and crafts, and we have our classic car show. And at the same time, you can bring your kids and explore all the different activities that we have during that time. Trust me, the kids' pedal pool is not as easy as it looks. I worked up quite an appetite, that's for sure. Oh yeah. There we go. Thanks so much, you guys. Thank you. After all that delicious food, I found a great dancing partner to work it all off. To get your taste of portage, head to their destination page at discoverwisconsin.com. And don't forget to visit us on Facebook to share your favorite spots to grab a bite to eat in Wisconsin. Up next, we're heading out onto the water, along the trails, and down the slopes. Discover Wisconsin is back traveling our way through Portage. From paddling the rivers to shredding snow, year-round recreation abounds in Portage. The Levee Trail runs along the Wisconsin River and it's a paved trail. It goes for three miles in one direction. It's got great views of the Wisconsin River, some nice scenic photographs that you could take as you're out and about walking the trail. Thank you so much. After a day on the trail, there's one place you have to stop, Craig's Popcorn Corner. And there's ice cream too. I chatted with the sweetest couple who stopped in on their 42nd wedding anniversary and shared some popcorn with a family who loves visiting Portage. She's not ready to eat it yet, but someday she's gonna be a fan too, right Gabby? Of course. Look at she's watering at the mouth, she's so hungry. <laughs> yeah. Another family fun destination right off the trail, Riverside Park. Free summer concerts at the Portage are held here every Wednesday evening. And summer in Wisconsin just doesn't feel complete until you head out on the lake. We have Swan Lake, which is great for taking out your pontoon and your family. You can also go to Silver Lake Beach, which is in town, and it has a great beach for swimming if you like to bring your kids out to that. I ventured onto Swan Lake to check it out. What happens on the lake as far as different recreational opportunities? Well, there's fishing, 
Uh, there's all kinds of game fish in the lake. People water ski. You see people now that are out here and they're uh, surfing behind boats. Wow. So it's, it's a fun place. After a quick driving lesson from George, I took over the helm for a bit. Lights. Okay. Horn, by golly, Horn that works. works. Horn <laughs> works. And you're in 11 foot of water, and you should turn it out and head away from it now. You're in nine. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Seven, six, five. Oh, That's my gosh. That's why it's right? You're doing good. Which way? Well, you're this not way, over here. This way, right? Yeah, head out that way. Whew. That was a close one. We better get back on land. You can stay dry while taking advantage of the lake view from the Portage Country Club, which features 18 holes and a driving range. Or you can try nine holes at Pine Trail Golf Course at Saddle Ridge. Sporting enthusiasts can also cheer on some curlers. The Portage Curling Club has kept this historic sport alive every winter since the club was founded in 1850. And speaking of winter, what an awesome day to be out of the hill! Cascade was uh, opened in January of 1962. It's been in my family for over 30 years. And we went from eight trails when it originally opened to 36. We have skiing and snowboarding as well as snow tubing. So if you ski or snowboard, great. If you don't, we'd love to teach you. These experts look like they know what they're doing. Me, on the other hand. All right, I hate to say this, Josh, but you're gonna have your work cut out for you because I have done this like once before, like four years ago. Okay, well that sounds like you're off to a pretty good start already. All right. Uh, mostly we teach a lot of very first time beginners here, so that'll okay. be good. Perfect, so what are the basics? We'll put this part up here. Josh walked me through getting all strapped in. I'm already, t I'm already out of breath. <laughs> then we worked on the basics like my stance and how to turn. So you want to push down on that. Whoa. Ooh, careful. You got that other, I'll, <laughs> I'll try and get out of your way a little bit here. You didn't think I was going to be such a hazard. Once I felt more comfortable, we hit the hill. The bunny hill, that is. Hey, at least I didn't fall right away. I might need some help with the brakes, though. Well, it was fun to move. That was pretty good. Cascade Mountain has an assortment of trails ranging from beginner to difficult, so anyone can try it out or show off their skills. Now this is perfect. A little time out on the hill and then some hot chocolate by the fire. Oh yeah. Travelers can also enjoy a fire at the Sky High Camping Resort cabins near the top of Cascade Mountain. What a view. Portage is a great place if you want to explore. If you want to find some new adventure that you haven't seen before, we're going to have it here in Portage for you. If you love history, if you love outdoor recreation, or if you just want a nice, easy walk along the Wisconsin River, that's what you'll find here in Portage. From its fascinating history and exciting events to year-round recreation, there are a ton of ways to explore Portage, where the North begins. For more information and bonus video from the episode, go to discoverwisconsin.com. While you're there, click on the Kadiddle link to watch entire episodes from this season or past seasons. And don't forget, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Discover Wisconsin Radio all across the state. We're gonna stay up over your left foot. How do I get going? You point the nose down a little bit towards me. Now a break for some fire action and a little hot cocoa. Oh yeah. Did you just say fire action? <laughs> I think I did. 